urakoze kuba mwabahaye umwanya wo kutuganiriza kuri uyu munsi aho twateraniye aha ku murindi habere ama amateka akomeye ya RPA na RPF tukaba twaje turi urubyiruko um, twese cyangwa se benshi muri twebwe uh, dukoresha imbuga nkoranyambaga um, nk'umwuga cyangwa se mu kwamamaza ibikorwa bije bitandukanye dukora tunazi yuko social media ari nambara uh, tugomba kurwana kandi twiteguye kurwana nayo nikubwa mwemereye ikibazo cy'ambere na kibaza uh, nkoresheje ururimi rw'icyongereza Thirty years ago you were exactly here um, 36 years old um, probably younger uh, than a few people in this audience maybe not me but a few people here outnumbered significantly uh, facing the reality that hundreds of thousands of people's lives including some of your relatives were at stake mr president take us back a little bit we want to understand what was your state of mind in that specific moment uh, when you gave the order that started the campaign to fight against the genocide against the tutsis thank you Uh, first of all, um, let me thank you for this moment. Um, much as uh, going back in time sometimes is very difficult. You, at least on my part, uh, I, 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 I wish I could forget uh, completely some of those things or days and but anyway that that is life so what you've just said is very true uh, we're here we have uh, now uh, recollected of the picture of uh, I literally have a map of this place uh, fixed uh, somewhere in my mind. Uh, it, it can't go away. Um, more so, what can't go away is uh, what was happening in our country and uh, what uh, was facing us and we had to deal with. Um, you know, um, I, I speak from my understanding. Um, when you are faced with a situation like that was at the time, there are few things that come to your mind. And there are few choices, either. Uh, you face what it is, however difficult it is, and uh, invest everything in you to deal with that. Or you break down and run away. There is really nothing in between. Either you do something and uh, or, or don't do it and the consequences either way are very obvious but at that time at that time sometimes it is not obvious you, you only come to think about it later so from the beginning when the struggle started uh, we understood the magnitude, the weight uh, we have to carry uh, in doing what we are trying to do and achieving what we had in mind. We never underestimated. Uh, but it, can, it turned out to be even much bigger, much more complicated than anyone could have thought. But still, you, we were there, so you had to deal with it the way 
it happened. So what was in what was it that was in the mind? Um, you don't want to go too far ahead of yourself because if you do that you probably will make a mistake because you are either you are thinking about to defeat or thinking about the victory which has not happened and if you thought of one if you are sure you are going to succeed it may end up actually being a failure or if you think you have already failed uh, that means you're not going to try as much as you could have and uh, you, you, you may actually end up with a failure uh, when it could have been different, when you could have succeeded if you tried everything you could. So here, this is the place um, where so many things happen. First of all, taking this place and uh, occupying it and turning it into headquarters for uh, the RPF and the RPA combined uh, must have happened in 1992, I think around April maybe, if I remember, what was that? Because the RPA was involved in the fighting along the border and they hadn't taken much of the territory inside Rwanda where they had surviving along the border between uh, Rwanda and Uganda. Uh, where some of us had come from and um, so the the RPF meaning the chairman the commissioners were not part of the fighting force we are staying in different parts in fact we had the headquarters in in Brussels uh, Belgium but we also had another in uh, Kampala Uganda, that's why it all started. Um, and then sub headquarters in different parts of the world. So when we took this place, we were able to bring the two closer together, or really together, the RPA and the RPF. And um, this became our headquarters after uh, uh, taking because, you know, a little bit of history, when um, the war started in uh, 1990, I was, um, that before that, I was serving in the Ugandan army and so on and so forth. Most of us were, uh, or a number of us, and um, uh, when the war started, I was not uh, anywhere near here. I was uh, attending a military course in Kansas, Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, uh, Command and General Staff College. Yeah, but I had now to work my way back uh, to, to be here with the rest. So when I came, I found um, uh, chaos. Uh, because the leader, the first leader of uh, our struggle had been killed on the second day of the attack, uh, Fred Rujema. And um, so you understandably, it was already a difficult situation, then you, the organization loses a leader and uh, uh, what follows is, is easy to understand. Uh, so when I came back, 
in the first two weeks of October. I arrived back from the US and uh, came and joined the others and tried to reorganize and so that's when we organized and started fighting in a more organized manner because of that case I am talking about that happened uh, when we lost the, uh, the leader who had uh, led the struggle. Um, so that's, that's um, I'm trying to cut things short so that it is not a too long story, but uh, so that's all the way from then that chaos came the 90 past, 91, and then 92, we found ourselves here, and what I was just narrating happened. Uh, and it happened after we had taken places around here. In fact, that's a, that was specifically after attacking Biumba, the Chumbi now. We are going to have a meeting. Mm -hmm. We there were uh, government forces of that time, and they were, they were also forces deployed here, in different paths. So we we planned and moved from the east, because we are more towards the Nyagatare and uh, in between. We are trying to survive. Um, so we organized and uh, attacked a number of uh, government enemy positions uh, around, including the one here, which happened uh, last after actually taking Biumba then, the Chumbi and different other parts. Uh, we did by bypassing their positions and actually attacked them from the back. We, we went through the enemy deployments, cut through and the, those who were here didn't know we had attacked Tibiumba uh, then. And uh, with the others, then a place called Rukomo and uh, other places, Bungwe and I don't know whether they still bear those names, I haven't followed over it, but uh, mm -hmm. so then we took this place because our positions were now far ahead, so this was more or less protected and um, that's why we turned it. We had the headquarters, it was making it easy for us because from here to the border I think is about 30 kilometers maybe something like that. So we would operate, going forward and spread wherever we needed to. But at the same time we had access to the border with Uganda and that's how most of the time we used to get food and medical supplies and other things we needed. So it was easy, this position was easy to connect us with the world but to connect us with the, the uh, country and uh, enabled us to carry out the operations we had to carry out. So we grew from here quite fast. And um, yeah, so that, that is um, um, a number of things. It was coordinating from the east, but also the that north now is when we're in Ibirunga. So it was like this. So we are here and we used to coordinate. Um, so, what was in my mind when it came to the time? You know, there came a time there were peace negotiations and in Arusha and then it failed. And I remember in 1993, yeah, was it 93, February 8th, I think, 
the Arusha peace negotiations failed and because the government had started killing people in the Chibirira, uh, started killing Bagogwe in uh, those areas and we told them we can't be here talking peace and then uh, they kill people again so that means we are going to fight again and so the, the, um, the negotiations failed in 92 we so stopped because of that and they resumed the fighting in fact that's when we took now uh, a lot a big t a much bigger territory than we even had when we resumed the fighting uh, later on uh, we, we spread and uh, yeah so from 92 no 93 february we had had because of ceasefire and in peace negotiations we got an opportunity and trained the uh, 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 f fighters and uh, they were ready for the next task meaning when the ceasefire broke then we resumed fighting we took uh, you heard of there used to be a demilitarized zone that you talked about, you have heard about when we fought took a territory then there was a global outcry and everybody was descending on us and they thought we were going to take Kigali actually but I don't think much as we could easily have militarily from the operational point of view would have easily taken Kigali but I thought politically it would be a big mistake in, and that's why I prevailed over there was the uh, urgency for people to to say well, let's finish the job but I, but I thought it wasn't going to the job wasn't to get finished because in a way we would be overstretched then we are taking on something much bigger than we can handle organizing the country but still the forces were they were being defeated here but as the government was still established you now they are still had forces I think we would have faced bigger problems than uh, people thought. So, but when we were being told we must go back so that peace talks continue, resume and continue, um, in the end we put a demand which will not uh, 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 relinquish. We demanded that for the areas we have taken a big part of the country as a result of, the, of breaking the ceasefire by government and so on and so forth. We cannot return this this area or these positions to the government. <laughs> they've lost that and they've lost it because of their own uh, big mistake. So we compromise to make things simple for everybody. We, we, we actually gave in to some demands, but created a formula that would allow us to take it. We said, if we leave this place, it should be demilitarized, and maybe UN, or there was also at the time some African Union observers were here, and um, said they should monitor this area, the government should stay where we pushed it to and for us we have no problem going back to our positions and this area in between remains a, a demilitarized zone. But we had already registered a huge victory. Uh, we, we are able to connect with the people in the country to a great extent. We um, it put pressure on the government because they really got a very bad beating. 
and, and they were now open to more serious discussion. Uh, and that's what. So uh, everything was being coordinated uh, now from here, from Murindi. So when it came the genocide, uh, even before that, we, we, we used to monitor everything happening, we used to monitor militias being trained in the, there are hundreds of thousands in every district as we have them now. Um, and the plans, the plans would leak, we had the people who would tell us, and we used to share it with the, the UN, the forces that were present here in the country, and, and we found actually they knew a lot about what the preparations were, um, by whom, where, and for what intention. They, they knew, when you hear people talk about genocide and as if it was something that just happened or happened because of uh, Javier Mana's death or this and that. It's all rubbish. They, they, they. This happened way before. Uh, in fact, uh, Darel, General Darel, the commander of the UN forces, used to come here many times would come by helicopter or by road many times they, they would, there are so many visitors who used to come here even from outside of Rwanda and, uh, and we used to share this information we used to discuss it we would give them information you have give them evidence give them and sometimes they would f we would find they already know they uh, so, yeah, uh, there's a particular question you raised, what the feeling was when things were happening, including when genocide started. You know, it is hard to go back and tell people what you are thinking. Honestly, I don't even remember some of the things I was thinking. <laughs> things were happening so fast, so... Uh, and it was so stressful. And... Um, I spent more time and energy trying to stabilize myself so that I don't collapse under the weight of uh, everything but uh, focused on saying first if it is fighting we must fight to win if it is even politics we must do the right thing politically still make progress and um, and then when the genocide started the immediate thing was to see fight the people who are killing, second, try and save as many people as we could, if it were possible, but same time collapsing the government that uh, was responsible for that. While we had many people, there is not a person even here, I'm sure among you, there is not a person here who doesn't have uh, a number of people who were killed that were known to them, were relatives, were parents, were children, were things like that. Uh, and, 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 and by the way, it is the, because I've asked many times, you see, in, in a situation like ours, genocide is happening, there are perpetrators, there are victims. But overall, there is nobody who is not dying on either side. You are killing people they are in a genocide. You are therefore going for those you are targeting. And, but at the same time, those who are doing the killing of other people were also facing death from, because we had to fight them. Uh, so in the end, 
nobody, there is not a single person of the millions here in Rwanda who would say they gained from this. Everybody lost. Even those who started it and started killing people, they wanted to achieve something, but they didn't achieve it. Because what they intended to achieve was uh, not just killing a few, they wanted to exterminate people. A certain group of people, they, they thought it deserved that, or they wanted to, to kill. So it didn't happen, because not everybody died. Uh, there is always a going to be people who will, will remain alive. And so I think that's uh, what else you want me to tell you. <laughs> yep, thank you, you very much. Ask me anything, yeah. Yes, thank you very much, Your Excellency, uh, for the context. Um, yes, I'm sure there's a lot of questions uh, from the crowd. Uh, so I'll open it up to the floor. Uh, please raise your hand if you have a question. And uh, before you ask your question, Introduce yourself, uh, tell us a little bit of who you are, and then uh, address your question. Try to be as concise as possible. Skovia? My cousin, you are president of the Republic, Nitwa Skovia Mutesi, Dumanitsi, which in Yamakuru, Mama Ugaga Sabo. I see you every day on the media, on social media. <laughs> And the social media, yeah. Yeah. Marcoze, it was a change in a shaka kuza uh Sovar Nu Yabish Garagara in Zirariko Miariko, Najizichivazo Nifuza Kuaza, Ese uh Musovan Ramute Imham Vumari Mufite Ikomeye, Yunga Bakomo Shora Mutsinda, Utajitsi Bga Habjarimana, Garufinga was Ikome, Ndetse Bashi Chiwena Mahanga, Mubjukuri Yunvi Kanagan Ha Komeye, Numayaho, Uyumukanya Tujezaha, General Kavare Dusovanuri, Ukoma Jiraga, Mumutaru Koma Sanzevi Meze, Kobja Salangite Yugova. Impamvu ikomeye mwagize mukumva ko muri gutsindura urugamba kugeza uyu munsi nyuma y'imyaka 33 mwicayaho ndabashimye ndakubwiza ukuri nta ntabwo ari science ngo muri science nararebaga nkasanga turi gutsinde cyangwa ntabwo ari it's not anything ntabwo nta kintu cyari yihari cya kwemezaga ko turi butsinde kirenze umutima wacu kuvuga ngo natsinda ntatsinda ngomba kurwanira ukuri kwanje nicyo nicyo umuntu yashingiye ibisigaye bikubakira aho ngaho ntabwo rero nta wari ufite ikizere ngo ibintu bigomba kugenda bityo kuko na bimwe uko abantu babitekerezaga cyangwa babyifuzaga bigomba kugenda siko byagenze eh kuri bimwe hirya no hino ariko byo ibyo mvuga yo kuvuga ngo twari ahantu vuga ati Um I mean, Tangirejo, Hari kimwe cyangwa nk hari ikindi ariko ukaba ufite ibintu bibiri gusa kuvuga ngo eira ndabihunga inigendere nkiza amagara yanjye kuko hari ababikoze barahunga barigendera babivamo n’ubu barakiruka ntibaragaruka ibyo babikora ikindi ni ukuvuga ngo oya na wundi ugenda ibyo narwaniraga nubundi nukuri nukuri kwanje ngomba kubikomeza ni nabizera mbizire eh wundi ni ibintu bibiri rero yizo urahunga cyangwa rasigara uhangane n'ikibazo 
ibi byo guhangana n'ikibazo byari mu bantu benshi n'icyo kiza cyabyo byari mu banyarwanda benshi ntabwo bari bake abahunze ngira ngo nibo bake kurusha basigaye bahangana n'ibibazo muri uko guhangana rero n'ibibazo nyine ugomba gukoresha yo ubwenge noneho ukoresha ubwenge ese uhangana n'ibibazo ute guhita amize ruhangana nabyo nayo noneho niho hazira gukoresha umutima nubwenge bikaguha icyo gukora bitewe n'icyo ufite n'icyo uzi ku mwanzi n'uburyo bwo kukoresha kugira ngo utsinda ari urugamba rumwe hano cyangwa handi cyangwa utsinda urugamba runini rwo kurangiza ikibazo cyose ikindi kize nta na chimu cyari gihari cyahuntu wari wese yewe nabatsinzwe banza batari bazi ko bazatsindwa babaga bazi ko ni leta bafite ibyangombwa byose bumvaga baraho twebwe bitaga inyenzi bazatunyura hejuru gusaba ka gente natwe kubera aho aho twavaga nuko twari tumeze no bushobozi abo tari buhagije twari dufite usibye uwo mutima wo gukora ibyo ushaka gukora ora bikoraga ariko ntabwo nta guarantee nta kintu cyakwemezaga ngo ibyo rwani ruzabigeraho ariko bagomba kurwana nene we kuko nicyo wahisemo kandi niyo nzere yari imbere ya barebaga wakoresha gusa so nta ntazagira ukubeshya ngo ibyo twite nsinzi ngo barayirebaga ya barayirwaniye bayigeraho ariko kuba warayirebaga iza ibyo bizavuga no taruhari urakoze cyane Yes, uh, the change was um, at first on a microphone for the Eric. Yes, she's a cool call. Okay. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. My name is Eric. Uh, we just had a great visit of the site uh, that was your military base, and uh, it was a great visit. And then I went on to revisit one of the oldest video, but the famous one, uh, where you were addressing your force, I think, back in 1990. You told them in Swahili, I we called. Jeshi hili itakuwa msingi wa mabadiliko and then we went on to tell them uh, sasa ndiyo maana matendo yetu yanapaswa kuwa tofauti na yale ya wale tunapigana nao uh, for me uh, these were super great values of RPA so my question is uh, how could you envision unity and integrity uh, uh, knowing you were not even allowed in your country, even coming to visit your friends and family, uh, you could ski, s uh, sneak in. Um, and then uh, we also had that uh, uh, not here, uh, I think I need to uh, fact check this, that uh, some of the Habyarimana forces that were wounded during war, some of them were treated here. And then uh, where did these values come from and how uh, do they remain the foundational values of RPF today? Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, societies, uh, anywhere, or people, whatever, um, have values, uh, certain beliefs, what they think is the right thing to, to believe in. Uh, and then, um, so Rwandans have values. There's no question about it. Uh, in, in fact, uh, that that uh, to an extent explains the the problem the world has uh, in the world. There are some people in some parts of the world who think they are the only ones who have values and their values must be conformed to by others. 
which uh, I personally feel insulted by and could not accept, can't accept it. It is not true. Uh, there are no people with better values than others. And, and better, how would you measure that? B better in what sense? So, with the Rwandan values, and, and even with the effort to try and integrate the values, your own values, with other people's values, so that um, it is broadened, or you look at it uh, in a global context, the way it should be. Um, the governance of the country, the politics of the country, ordinarily should reflect the values of that society. So for a long time in Rwanda we had our own values even before the colonialism, okay we can talk about that briefly, brought their own values then gave uh, or distorted the values of, of Rwandans and, and unfortunately Rwandans came to accept the distorted values as their own. What do I mean here? Having a country that is divided on an ethnic basis isn't part of the values we should be uh, we should espouse uh, we shouldn't but that's what happened so the RPF the origin of it much as it is problems that had happened to some Rwandans to not only those living in the country, but especially those outside as refugees. Um, for things to go back to the right order, the, the politics must be bringing back the unity of the country so that we are no longer ethnic groups, but rather the integration of that into or by national unity. Uh, so that, that's, that's really how RPF was born. It's the foundation of RPF. So what I was saying to the fighters at that time is clearly in narrating to them the story of who we are. Uh, or rather reminding them, <laughs> because uh, I think everyone knew, but mm. people don't always do things based on what they know they should be doing. So I was just reminding them, or I was telling them, that uh, this struggle has a meaning. It's not just fighting and you kill, they kill, and. <laughs> Uh, and you take over, you, you, even if you take over an authority or you are into government, you are there, you should be there for a purpose. It's, it's not uh, just taking over, <laughs> it's there for a purpose. Um, so that's what I was, and, and I knew that, of course, even as now it still is, even the RDF that. Uh, transitioned from the RPA uh, into the current uh, defense force we have um, is the center is the center of gravity here yeah, of what we are 
doing in the country or the country what it is what it is security stability social economic development and so on and so forth that message uh, and which they all understood uh, still plays part in what we are doing today or who we are today or what we want to be in the future yes that that differentiation between uh, those who are fighting that later on committed genocide or some of them had done so actually in uh, many other you remember this genocide is of uh, 60s of uh, 70s uh, so you know, I was saying we, we, we are there we are fighting for a cause that will change all that and create Rwanda to be what it should be uh, so that is even the, the message today even tomorrow <laughs> Well, if we, we can fail to, to achieve it, but it remains, the, it stays the message. <laughs> it is what should be driving us, uh, uh, even politics we are doing, even the elections we are preparing for tomorrow and the campaign is here running up and down. I'm not running up and down for nothing. <laughs> I'm running up and down for that message <laughs> and, and to represent it and put it where it belongs and give it the results it should have. Mm. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, more questions? Um, Joel? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Pokademi. Um, so my question goes, my name, first of all, my name is Tikuri Joel, I'm a content creator and a proud first time voter. Mm. My question is, um, your name so is... So when you were here, you probably were not here to born. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad to be voting for the first time. All right. Um, so my question is, your name is one that is known for intentional leadership, but today we'd like to know how do you take care of Polkagami beyond the official roles that you play? Sorry, uh, let me get your question again. <laughs> yes, your name is one that is known for intentional leadership. Yeah. How do you take care of Bokagami beyond the official roles that you play? Okay. Uh, let me tell you just of, uh, I mean, uh, this place where we are actually, let me tell you something. I don't know it is necessary. When I was uh, at the Command and General Staff College in the U.S., I went uh, to... It is going to turn out to be a long story, maybe, but... You know how I went there, also? First... Uh, it was not me supposed to be going for that course. I was supposed to be going for a course somewhere else. The one supposed, who was supposed to be going to the U.S. was Fred Ruijema to attend that course. Even when I arrived at the course, I had to change the, 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 the documents. Everything was recorded in the Fred Ruijema's name. So we had to change all that into my names. But what happened, maybe I'm sure many of you don't know. When we had started, when we started organizing in Uganda to actually do what we, the Ugandans got to know about it, we were doing it discreetly. Uh, and even encouraging Rwandans to join the army and inviting some from different other parts of the world to come and join and be with us. And, because that time it was easy to join them in Uganda, they were looking. They were so, had many groups fighting, so we filled the space. Uh, and some of us had had the opportunity of being part of the struggle from the beginning. To, and we were so organizing and bringing people in. 
Um, so the Ugandan system wanted to disorganize us so that we don't remain uh, planning and doing what we wanted to do. So they, they wanted to send the top three of us, no, four, scatter us outside the Uganda to go and attend courses while we, in the meantime, we get disorganized. So Fred Ruijema was supposed to go to the U.S. Uh, I was supposed to go to Nigeria. Um, Bunyenyezi, you have heard of Bunyenyezi. Chris Bunyenyezi was supposed to be sent to some other place. Bayingana was supposed to be sent to Russia. So when we got up to know about it, I talked with Fred. And I told him, I'm the one who insisted and encouraged him not to actually go anywhere, because that will just mess all of us up. He was our leader, then he said, if you go, that means uh, postponing it for another five years or, or something. <coughs> so he, we, uh, we agreed he's actually going to decline, and we tried to create a story of he would tell the authorities so that they would understand he's, he's not just uh, objecting to going. And so he went back to the authorities, told them, and of course there was a, a bit of trouble. It was not well received. So I think the one who was told that he's not going and so on and so forth must have connected and said, you see, these people are up to something. Then they said, okay, since you, you are rejecting it, then Kagame must go. <laughs> so it, it was going to be either him or me, <laughs> so that still they maintain that thing they wanted to. Uh, I'm sure they are warning you for time, but uh, <laughs> let, let me say we are in charge of time here, don't, don't worry. So he declined and they stayed, they sent me as if to say, okay, if you are going to go, then this one will go, because they never wanted us together. Uh, they thought if they got rid of one, they would just create problems for the other. So then they called me up and said, so you, you, you Fred was going, da, 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 da. Now he has problems, he's not going, so you, you should be the one to go. He said, I have no problem. So I went back and told Fred, I said, you see, they are now they think they have known our plans. So if I decline, they may actually put us in jail, both of us. So to survive this and continue our plans, you stay and do what we have been trying to do. And for me, I will go. But when things start, I will anyway find my way back easily. I don't need any permission from anybody. So that's what happened. Uh, when I went to for a course, blah, 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 short, long story short. So later on, my wife, we had just been married. She's here. <coughs> we, we, they must have uh, thrown me out of the honeymoon and, <laughs> <laughs> and just <laughs> And, and the same thing, of course, so, and, and, but she found me there a few months later, but, uh, and at that time, I, I'm trying to arrive at a quick thing here, uh, and trying to separate the two Kagamis and program three or four, I don't know. But 
uh, when she found me there, she was already pregnant for, with her first son, uh, Ivan. And when we, so uh, the point I'm arriving at in 93, no, no, actually in 94, just before genocide, he was three years old. He, he, he was sent to me, I stayed with him in this house uh, somewhere. Is it up here? Yeah, it's, it's up here. I stayed with the, him uh, for a few, maybe a week or less. In fact, when, um, yeah, 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 when uh, the other man uh, crashed in the plane, he was here with me. The boy was here with me. And we were, wa uh, we, the news came, we were watching the football. Yes. Where? In the, one of these houses, Where? yes. There was uh, uh, an Africa, Africa Cup tournament. I remember it was Senegal playing Cameroon, I think, when we were watching here. And uh, somebody came with, with a message to me that uh, Javier Mana's plane had crashed and uh, there is chaos in uh, Kigali and so on and so forth. So, that follows a different issue. But he was here with me. Uh, now, you can see he was here with me, not as a soldier, not as anything, but <laughs> just as a part of the family. So I was trying to reduce the amount of stress I had uh, accumulated mm -hmm. by having uh, my son around. Something else funny that happened when of course, I said he was here when the chaos started. In fact, I left him here and went uh, with the forces that were going to Miove. That was Miove. And uh, so I sent a message back. I told the people who had said, he had said they should quickly take this kid back across the border and take her, him back to his mother. Uh, you want to believe it? He refused. <laughs> he refused, he cried, he, he said, no, you must see me first. He was like, where is my father? Where is he? <laughs> he refused uh, for the, that day and the next day were very busy out there, so I had to drive and walk back that, like, like on the second day, to come and convince him to go. Yeah, so I, I told the, the commanders I was with, where the forces were, that they give me just a few moments, I first go and solve a personal problem. <laughs> so I had to come back. Actually, at that time it was very dangerous because there were some, still some forces uh, in between and we had, at night I tried to drive, uh, uh, I had a Land Rover, I tried to drive, but we were using uh, indicators. You couldn't put on lights because we easily have uh, so some places we would walk, others I would drive, then I came back, arrived here around uh, 4.30 in the morning and uh, stayed up until he, he was sleeping, until he, he woke up. <laughs> and uh, so I told him, you know, da 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 da, your mother wants you, you, know, you have to go. It seems he was happy where he was staying, he wasn't. <laughs> so I had to convince him, I literally forced him, gave them somebody uh, who 
to cut him to the border uh, and then I went back uh, immediately. I didn't even arrest him. I had to go back and in the forces. So I'm just trying to bring in the, the, the official me and the personal me. <laughs> I, I thought maybe there wouldn't be a better place uh, or thing to explain it than that story. So we had to keep one part is family, another part is work, and another part I don't know what it is. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. President. With your permission, we'll take two last questions. Okay. Yes. Maybe with a bonus of three, if they could make it short, then. <laughs> Yes, uh, Lionel, please, you can help us with the microphone. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, my name is Lionel Ditebili. Uh, I work at the Pan-African Review. Um, 30 years ago, you were already the target of uh, criticism coming from beyond the borders of Rwanda. From when, 30 years ago? Uh, yeah. I'm still taking oh. this criticism. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, th that was my question. Like, yeah. uh, what was it then, and what is it now that is driving that criticism? And what can the new generation of Rwanda learn from the way you handled it? Well, it's hard to tell, but, but also, not, I shouldn't exaggerate. It isn't too, too difficult. Is there anybody in the world who would not be criticized? Or who is not criticized at one time or another? I don't think. Uh, and, and it depends on um, the interests or even uh, the views of those who are criticizing you, about you, the, their views, their whatever interest or if you but it also means you are actually somebody if you have to be criticized you know somebody who is nobody want to be criticized <laughs> because they criticize you you are criticizing you for something that in one way they associate with but would want it different. Uh, th th that is one possibility. The other is uh, what you, either you, you, your thinking or your actions or your are a danger to them. In other words, they, it's like they deprive them of something. Um, for example, if I'm, say, if we, we, two of us, I'm telling you, I say, you know what, let's do this, or you are telling me, let's do this, so that we are not dependent on the other one. And the other one actually wants you to be dependent on them. They will not be happy that you are trying to be independent. So they will attack you for wanting to be independent because they don't want you to be independent from them. And there are many ta tactics, there are many ways of doing that. They may not tell you directly that because they, I mean, it looks ridiculous that they are attacking you for wanting to be independent. So they just find ways of creating a bad name for you so that that works against you and it's not seen that they are the ones working against you. What is working against you is, is what they have created about you, the image. They make it look, uh, happen like that and absorbs them. Uh, the responsibility of uh, of attacking you or criticizing you, so they are, it's like, you see, 
is like that, you see that? You know, uh, at a higher level, like in our case, you know, there are, we, we touched a bit of history and said, you know, uh, what has been happening in Rwanda. Let's see, let's talk about genocide alone. It happened because the country was divided, is, you know, the colonial times brought in the kind of politics and that uh, shaped Rwanda like that and so on. And then, uh, anyway, the ult uh, ultimately genocide happened. So when you tell the story, actually the way it was, from colonialism and then up to the time of genocide. Those who are responsible for the colonial times don't like it. And when you say they are associated with the genocide or the cause of it, they are not happy with you. Now, simple thing, for example, one of the things they do, and a simple one, They want to keep attacking you like you are a violator of human rights, you know, no freedoms, no democracy, blah, 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 blah. By doing that, it's like they are saying, you see, what happened in Rwanda actually is not anything to do with the outside. Rwandans have been killing each other. You see, they even, the genocide was uh, this. Killing this, so, and then they turn. That's the, the story of turning uh, the victim into a perpetrator. You have seen how many times they, they are out there saying, accusing uh, RDF, accusing uh, Rwanda. You know, uh, the security. I was reading something the other day saying, you know, you, you have seen uh, this consortium of. Uh, Journalists, what they are saying, that Rwanda has spies all over the world, <laughs> killing their opponents, you know, they, they, everywhere, in the whole world. They, 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 so it's like they, they, they keep saying this about Rwanda. Rwanda is just a bunch of killers, you know. They, not only that, they killed each other, now they are killing opponents. And now they, you see, that when you get lost in that story, there is no outside blame. The outside blame disappears. Even uh, the UN that was here that uh, did nothing to stop genocide, or the whole world that watched and did nothing about genocide, ends up being absorbed. It's now Rwanda. It's Rwanda, the victims, the perpetrators, they change positions. It's the, the outside world. Uh, well, even the journalists who were busy actually orchestrating genocide and supporting genociders, and they are the ones now who are spinning this story, like those ones. Yes, because of their interests, their association, the, the way they want to shape the story of Rwanda, the narrative of Rwanda, the way they want, you see? So you, you, now, if you are weak, if Rwanda is weak, it's going to succumb to, you know, and even be apologetic and <laughs> all, they shape it the way they want, they promote the people, and uh, you, you can see when they are saying, you know, these are the people like the Ingabires, like the, you know, you know somebody in Gabire, this uh, small woman of a genocide, you know. But this, they, they want the whole world to believe that she, she's an opponent, she's a, Actually, they would wish that one to be the president of Rwanda. 
and, and, and she also believes it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she believes it and uh, she's everywhere giving uh, lectures and, <laughs> you know. But this is, it, it's not Rwandan. It's not, this is not a Rwandan who, th who believes this story. But the outsiders, these journalists, these uh, ones who go to prison, what do they call it? Forbidden stories. Uh -huh. It is forbidden to be talking about to Ingavidi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm actually sort of going to be blamed for it. You, you receive it. <laughs> so, you, you young people who are in this kind of thing, you, because influencers are, you hold opinion. You hold opinions for a, a reason. You are part of the social political fabric of this country. So if, if you, you don't grasp that easily, you, you, I'm sure maybe, you know, among you or somewhere else, there are people who are op 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 operating the opposite of how you are doing it. Yeah. Yes, so they must be having a reason, either of their own or being used by others. So constantly, we, we've got to be aware, we have got to be, but we also got to be, have what we want for ourselves. Uh, and we should not be apologetic about it. You check any time, any day, I've never been apologetic for what RPF is doing, what Rwanda wants, what I am doing with the, these people who abuse, uh, criticize, and even in high offices, they are somewhere outside in the world there. You know, you, you meet somebody, they say, yeah, why, why, in Rwanda, why you, you are doing this? You say, what? You say, what evidence do, I, do you have? They said, but uh, so and so said this. They are talking about one of the influencers who <laughs> <laughs> somewhere out there. <laughs> whom they are at the same time using, and then they are quoting that one as evidence. I mean, so this is a world you must really try and learn to be sophisticated, at least in understanding the nuances of uh, these things and the world we live in. Mm. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, Maybe a question from the front. Naomi. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, I'm Azir Anit Kwanishimi Naomi, and uh, I'm one of the content creators here in Rwanda. I think I've also seen you many times. Uh, yes, I'm so happy to be sitting right in front of you and next to the First Lady. Uh, my question is, uh, what to be in Tuzari and go to Tuzari Nadi? It goes. And, <laughs> <laughs> and some of us here are making a living through social media. Um, what are the steps? Thank you. Mm. Good. First of all, it is to know the story. No, 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 Nibyo niba nibyo wasanze ari byiza muracyari bato nyine bimwe mugenda mu byumva ariko mukuriye ko byumva mukwire no kubimenya mukamenya ngo ibi byiza ntabwo ari uko byari bimeze imyaka 30 ishize then the question is byagenze gute kugira ngo tube dufite ibi byiza Immediately also what kicks in, it is an unknown mutual way. No good one, what do you call? Mateka as such a can't have the TV is a Mesa Gurcha. Are you a Mateka Mavi as a Garuk? So you made no, you could it out. 
no kurinda ibyo byiza ufite kubirinda gute rero hari uburyo bwinshi hari kubirinda even by shaping the opinion facts evidence and explanation hari kuba ngo ikintu nikiza umba ijuti ni kuki ari kiza nacyo nabikubwira I will give you evidence, I will give you a fact. I will give you why I believe which Tihuni is. So, Mubiyo Mukwara Yonine, Na Hunga. Iyo Bija Jeza Hand, 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 Iyo Bija Nabwi byiza biva mu opinion gusa ngo yuye no mu opinion habari hari ntambara nabyo ura buri munsi you wake up ready for a fight of some kind right yes no mvuga nabi niyo wabutavuze igihugu nabi no mvuga nabi ndakunda turahangana ndakubaza impamvu mvuga nabi kandi nge numva izindi ntambara zibaho ni izisanzwe z'amasasu noneho zirimo no kubura ubuzima ivyo nabyo nawe bihejwe mo ivyo rafya hari hari abyitabira baka eh so nibyo rero cyambere ko byose bihera ku mutima wawe nubwenge bwawe nuko ntekereza na precise nka bya muzabimbwa muzabe ntari nuko ngo ngo kubimbwa ni kubaho tagira opinion utagira hm umuntu yagutuka uti amusore akaba akaba rewe apologizing no should be the one to apologize not not me eh so kubi ntari vuga ari ari ino guhangana ni kibazo cyabi cyawe ku giti cyawe cyabi cy'umuryango wawe cyabi cy'iki gihugu akigira cyawe you want to ni bora gutanga umusanzu mu kwikemura mukoze cyane your excellency tufata the bonus question we do i um byuka vuba yes murakoze anitwa kwizera Josue aba ndumunyeshuri muri ibara ariko nanone nkankoresha social media ku izina rya byuka vuba cyasora cyaryanye ah mu kiganiro cyabahuje n'abanyamakuru muri byuka vuba i think cyangwa uracyaryanye yego i think i've seen it they have followed it thank you mr president eh ni wowe rero yego i didn't know yego a mu kiganiro cyabuje nabanyamakuru mwaka ushize muri 2023 no ku ku ifoto ya iri ku ntuzo koresha ntabwo ari ntabwo ari yawe bwa yego ari hundi muntu yego nakuba president nibyo yego then i have for thank you eh ah umunyamakuru wa TV One KNC yabajije niba abanyarwanda dukeneye kwitegura igihe twaba dutewe bitewe n'amagambo ari guturuka hanze aho uravuga ko ashaka kuzatera urwanda anyakuba chairman mwamusubije mumbwira ko dukwiriye kuryama tugasinzira tukongera tugasinzira nta kibazo dufite mu ku mu kwebwe twaragiye nyine nta kibazo dufite turyamu tugasinzira ako nifuza kubaza urubyiruko rusha gukomeza kuryama ariko rukaryama hari cyo ruryamanye kuburyo giye telefone azasonera utazakenewe ndi muntu ubigisha gukotana mwaba mu rutaganyiriza iki murakoze cyane byarateganyije byararangiye iyo kuvuga gutyo ngo buryamo sinzire Mukuta biha umwanya urenze wo bikwiye ariko naho ubundi ko igihugu cyacu gikora ari 
rabakirinda ku buryo bw'umwuga w'ibumwe hariko umutekano warwo birakora kandi ntabwo ari abantu bambaye iri amyenda gusa byanya n'umurimo wakora buriya ibikorwa bishingira no mu baturage bakorana n'abaturage hose ku buryo noneho no mu buryo bundi ari ubwi biza ari ubwi cyabaya hari imanuka yabaya hari uburyo ari ubugezweho ari ubusanzwe ari wa mutima navugaga abagomba kubimenya ku kanya barabimenya kabazi ngo haba impanuka haba ibiki ni mutabare ni mugire muti urumva rero ko bitasigara inyuma no mu buryo noneho bwo guhangana naba turuka hanze bashaka kuhungabanya eh umutekano wacu eh abantu mu kuryama ariko kandi nyine musigaye mufite na za telefone rero eh azaho ka alarm ka kubwira ngo ari uburyo bwinshi butandukanye aho abantu bagomba kubimenya noneho ari nubundi buryo bugomba gutegura abo ngabo bagomba kugira icyo bakora bashoboye hari ho bose eh ariko the message iri ari muryame musinzire wazi guhumuriza abantu but at the same time bivuze ngo ni ubu hari mu noneho hari bavuze ibyintare niye intare mu harimo ayibona eh ariko ndaburayi uzayirebe ari uhora usanga isa nisinziriye ariko buryo ntisinziriye eh iyo ni ukanda giye gusikumva irabyuka ariko ikindi gihe ibisinziriye kuruhuka kuryama rero mu gasinzira nibyo nubundi mukuriye guhu kugira iho umure mu karya mu gasinzira ariko muri mwe iya kantu gakomye rakanguka sibyo eh na 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 hivi bindi rero bya sakuza bire ya rwose nabo kandi barabize bya bindi no kuvuga gusa ko abashaka ko mujya mu ma makuru mu gasubizanya baratukana bagashaka kubasubiza na ukandura nkabo so barabihorera ariko yo byarenze umurongo bara barabize iki baba Murakoze cyane thank you very much your excellency for the uh, inspiring words uh, i believe that this place and the tour that we did was very inspirational for us mm -hmm. I, um maybe we will not uh, fight uh, the same kind of uh, fight that uh, you did uh, 30 years ago but uh, we have a very important fight to do as well sure. uh, which is uh, c um, information online and using social media for the right reasons so thank you very much uh, your excellency and uh, good luck on the campaign today thank you actually you are lucky you have uh, there is uh, the information fight uh, available for you and but you can even uh, join the other ones so for you you have to you have uh, <laughs> for me it was only one option that was just <laughs> the information one i didn't have yes. but for you you are lucky but just know that uh, the possibilities are limitless that's the most important thing and uh, this is your country it is yourselves it's uh, um there, there shouldn't be anything that should deprive you of what you want to have or want to be or want to just it starts within from within you just don't accept nonsense yes, yes. we will not yes <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your Excellency. Yeah.